everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today we're doing a really fun art class, painting class. I uh, gave you guys a subject which was a cardinal in snow on a, on a winter branch, and then um, let you guys vote on if you wanted to see that done in watercolor, oil pastel, or acrylic. Now, acrylic resoundingly won. Um, reasonable. I've been teaching acrylic on YouTube for 10 years. So you guys were like, no, no, acrylic. I need, I need this subject matter in acrylic. I have a feeling it's going to be something. I want to make sure that it's in acrylic. So it is. However, for those of you that campaign for watercolor or oil pastel, I just want you to know that your comments were heard, that I read your passion. And because of that, if you'll look, you'll see a snowman with wildflowers, a little snowman and wildflowers and watercolor coming up. And I'm going to make sure I get an oil pastel up because um, I want to make sure that if you guys are interested in it, you can see it. And I'm actually pretty good at the oil pastel thing. I didn't expect to be, but I weirdly am. So I have some cool tips and tricks to share there too. So those will be coming. That is happening. Yes. Acrylic did win. Our topic is a uh, cardinal on a uh, winter branch, and I did it kind of holiday themed. Today's surface is um, going to be on a canvas. 12 by 12. Here's our uh, tube of acrylic paint because um, we're going to be starting the ground with that. I have my wish that you guys are surrounded in hope and love and joy. <clears throat> The colors I put out are ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, cad red medium, yellow ochre, ca uh, cad yellow medium. This here is Mars black. Right there is zinc white, Z-I-N-C. It's a transparent white. And I love that for winter scenes and more involved painting. So I like to have some out. Does some nice job. It changes the value of a color without changing the color in a really cool way. Titanium white really changes the color. But there's our titanium white. Because we can't leave home without it. We got Doxazine Purple, Thalo Green, Burnt Sienna, and of course our glazing liquid. This one is in satin. I'm using satin now because the cameras um, have trouble seeing the reflection around the reflection from the gloss. It's a camera thing, not that one is better than the other. Um, I used to only do gloss because I like how gloss deepens colors. This, however, does keep that crazy wet shine off of your painting and soap. You might enjoy that. And that is what I've got. I will be doing a... I'm going to show you guys how to freehand this. And then right after the show when I finish painting it, I will give you guys a traceable from that. And so if you don't want to draw, it is okay. I will have a traceable for you. But if you do want to draw, I will show you what I'm going to do there in the steps. Now we're going to break this down into steps. Those will be timestamped later in the chapters and they'll be marked as chapters. So you can find your spot again when you're painting along. On the mic is my husband, John. I Hello. think I forgot to That's introduce okay. him with my verbose wordiness. Monologuing like a villain today. I've even got my weird palette platform that I'm on. I'm on my palette platform. Being a silly billy on my palette platform. Going to paint with friends. <laughs> I think you're doing okay here. Do you think I'm doing okay? I think so. I think this is kind that of is his expert opinion. John is an expert in me, and uh, that is his expert opinion. And we were discussing the other day how we're experts in each other because we've known each other longer than anyone else has known us. <laughs> this is true. Just, like, I'm an expert at John. Call me as an expert witness. I can explain it. Yep. All right. John's the same thing. So the step He's like, one? I explain. Yeah, let's do a step one. Step right. one is going to be an acrylic ground. I'm going to take ultramarine blue, and I'm going to just spread this out on the canvas and paint the whole thing a light value of blue you don't need to put the paint out this way you could paint it from palette to your canvas i just like to do this it's fun for me and uh it's silly and so i do it um sometimes you will get into habits or practices in your art studio not because there's some super serious technique but because it's fun you sing a little song or you have a little ritual this is just water I'll spray that on there. Just water and a mister. And I'm going to just spread that all out all over the whole surface. See? That's all I'm doing. Acrylic ground. This colored surface, uh, what it does is it helps us create a wealth of depth in our painting. Um, it really helps acrylics feel finished. I don't always like seeing a lot of white canvas through... Um, 
my painting in fact so much so that once like in school like i went this whole thing where i showed white canvas because it was such a stretch for me to leave canvas uncovered and in my house it was scandalous my mom was like you didn't paint all the canvas i was like i know it's intentional here is my artist statement to explain such a weird time in my life anyways you can see the whole thing's blue I might go over it a couple directions with my brush horizontally and vertically. You'll see me do that if you paint with me a lot. It is not a um, finish that I'm worried about. What I'm doing is I am just making sure that the acrylic polymer is over the entire canvas and that um, it's not resisting the paint at all. The acrylic paint really loves to stick to itself. It's kind of why we don't ever store paintings painting sides facing each other because if they touch and sit there for a half second and it gets over 65 degrees they are one painting mm. you know it may not even need the temperature sometimes it feels like they just merge together so a trick we can do in painting is also painting the whole surface with a solid acrylic ground because that will help the paint stick better i am using a water bucket and I have, it has three little compartments in it. It just helps me keep my water clean because I can go center first and then go here. And we're showing this on the video now. So you got to dry this. And I'm going to try to fix dry the buffering that. that we've got going on. We've got, we've got some, so I'm not sure if it's YouTube or us, but we've got, we're going to see if we can do something about it. So okay. We're going to do that. And I'm going to push that little. Okay. I'm hoping that this will fix it. And we're going to take a moment while she is drying the surface. Sorry that I'm also kind of like, rah, 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 but I'm going to see what I can do. To I think that this has got it, though. I think that this may. Oh, and the, the error went away. So I think that we're OK now. While she was drying, I was able to uh, restart the stream a couple times and it then kind of it re debuffered so you should see once it all gets fixed so okay now we're back i think everything is fixed from everything out of should space. be okay <laughs> the, uh, the 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 stream should be nice and good from here on in guys sorry for the jumping around but we got it i think we've got it fixed for now and i think it's been fixing on replay too oh for sure i know on, the on replay re it goes smoothly it's just a stream thing it's all a, right yeah. step 2 for me and you I'm going to be doing my background. I am going to be using one of my one inch oval mops. This is from the Princeton Select line. Um, I like this one, the Ultimate Varnish Brush from uh, Silver. I'm, I'm always looking for a good mop. Uh, this is synthetic. And I like synthetic for acrylic. The natural hair or goat hair, which is the black or white, holds too much water for me. Um, and so I prefer synthetic personally. I think it's a little easier for beginning artists personally. All right, I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. I'll go into that glazing medium. If you don't have the glazing medium, just go with wet. And I'm going to grab just a little bit of my black and my ultramarine blue. And let's come up here from the top. And I'm going to brush in a nice little dark glaze of black and blue. And I have blue under here. It's going to really keep a sort of cool aspect here. But somebody brought up a point about um, seasonal affective disorder and that the color palettes are so impactful. So I wanted to make sure that in this one, that uh, I had a lot of bright, cheerful imagery and that the coolness wasn't melancholy, but was instead refreshing and crisp. So that was another way to solve that. Um, sometimes when you guys write me about stuff, I really think about uh, the question and that was one that really got with me. I'm adding a little more blue to this. And so that's how I'm going to accomplish a slightly cooler winter background but yet keep the imagery uh, non-isolating sometimes cool colors or monochromatic palettes which is winter as a palette can visually for the person uh, viewing it painting it any of that feel really sad 
really sad. And right now, that seasonal affected disorder that is going on is yeah. bigger than ever. I did some looking online and like, like, how are people affected by this? And they are affected very strongly right now. They are going through a lot and just all over the world. I think that's what's surprising me is how um, people are just going through many similar things all over the world. I'm just using this gray and I'm blending it through. You can see that this brush and this application is very painterly and soft. A lot of the blue shows through. I want that. I like that. But you have to know that it is coming and it is expected. <laughs> All right. A little bit more black in there for the gray. And a little bit more blue in there for the gray. Sometimes on a bigger 12 by 12 canvas, um, you will work a little harder. Like I'll even find my arms will get a little more tired. <laughs> and that is because you're covering more surface. And that is a real thing that is going on in your painting experience. Now, once I have this all sort of out, I can begin to blend it out a little bit. And then weirdly over here, I'm going to come grab a bit of my burnt sienna. And make sure I've got a bit of brown over on this side. And I go right into the blue. And I can do that because I know that the ultramarine blue will just gray the burnt sienna. So even if I get too much burnt sienna in there, I'm okay. I'm just graying it. And then also the same is true of the black. So it really gives me uh, a little more forgiveness in that color mix. Little strategies that I can make. So I've got a kiss of brown down this side. And we're looking pretty good. I'm going to rinse out. I'm not going to dry, but I'm going to call this step one. And I'm going to move on before it's dry. Because what I think it is, is there's this weird middle stage of dry that is not bone dry, but it isn't tacky wet. And in that stage, you can do a lot of interesting layering and blending. So you wouldn't want to touch it. It's still wet to the touch, but it's not as juicy. I'm going to go ahead and put a little more black over here. I don't mind, again, that there's a little burnt sienna because we know with the ultramarine blue, it would gray anyways. I'm going to come back up to the top and continue to dust this. Um, it's kind of like a, a haloing or a vignette where the sky is darker, but then it has a keyhole of light in it. And that in the painting really creates a sense of fun drama. Once I get my um, background in, a lot of this goes pretty quickly. Sometimes getting a, a blended background can be a little challenging in acrylics. Um, because they dry quickly and they can feel a little tacky or sticky. And so learning how to negotiate with them gently can feel overwhelming sometimes. A little more blue and white and a little more blending medium to improve the flow of the paint. So Mary was asking if this will be on replay. Yes. Yes, this is on replay. And in fact, uh, most people, how they do my paintings is um, they come to a live show and they watch during the live. If they have any questions while they see it painted, they ask those. Then uh, they paint it on replay, generally sharing in the Facebook group as they go, like a as they're going and kind of sharing where they're at. And then everybody sort of who's doing that painting kind of supports each other through the process, like giving each other tips. So. In my group, um, I'm in there. You'll see me giving likes. You'll see me giving love. I'm active in my group every single day. Um, but the actual group, Facebook group, is more of a support group where you guys support each other at different stages of the journey. 
and 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 it's not about like uh oh yay celebrate the art sherpa <laughs> it's not that kind of group it's more like a, how you doing this week how's the painting going are you okay kind of group <laughs> gonna come here and add a little more uh um blending You can see as I gently go over an area, I can soften and diffuse it. And the blue being underneath makes sure that there's this fabulous kind of blue cast. But another trick that we did to keep it from feeling um, downbeat. And it's okay, by the way, if you're just looking at this and like, no, 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 it's still too blue for me. It's still too downbeat. Um, then you might want to go into uh, um, turquoise as your winter sky sometimes a turquoise sky will be a very cheerful sky and that's a very winter sky because you only really see those aquas in that cold winter weather you can see i just go over it again and just softly diffusing if i want uh get a little more blue in that get a little more blue in that You can see I can do sort of an angled downstroke and then come across it as a way to diffuse it. So you'll see that what I'm doing is I'm kind of hiding brush strokes. So some of you guys get a little frustrated uh, with the blending medium, and that is okay. It does it does have a learning curve. Just a little more white there. I'm now sort of adding more interest. I think. I'm going to do some vertical up and down brown. John, do you see my vertical up and down brown? Yeah. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see what I did? See what I did? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. This was a very, very, very good week. A lot of uh, good stuff happened. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Even though a lot of scary stuff is happening, a lot of good stuff happened. And so, in my, in my personal life. <laughs> So I've been kind of really pleased. That's that's good. I also have avoided the news all week, and I think that's the only reason I've been able to hold this state at all. Okay, I'm going to dry everything thoroughly. This is a, a full dry here. It's a full dry, and it may take a second because when you use a lot of the blending medium, it really slows down the drying time. So you find it slows down the drying time even with a hair dryer. Now this time we're going to watch on the overhead here as it dries. Okay. Because it's you're going to see here that the sheen is going to change, especially a lot as it goes as it dries. Because right now it's really reflective. And you can see that that's because the, the paint is still wet. But as it starts to dry and it loses that, that glossiness, you're going to see that it's going to start becoming much, much more uh, saturated. And, and the, the colors will start to come out. You'll, the, the, the blacks will start to come out. And that's because it's not being overpowered by that those white specular highlights. So now all of a sudden you can... Uh, you can see that a little better, and it and it shows up easier on the camera. So, just thoroughly dry. You'll see it's still a little wet up there, and as as she dries up in that corner, you'll see that those will it'll continue to get clearer and clearer and clearer. Um, so, you know, just uh, and, and a lot of that so that on the next layer that you paint on, you don't pick up any paint from the from the layer below or have it mix inadvertently. Um, you don't and. Those are just good practices for acrylicness. Still a little tacky still there, but it's okay. It's, it's okay It'll dry, yeah. It'll dry all right. Still be a little tacky. You can still see a little bit of the sheen in it. A little bit. And and that's, and that's the thing with the cameras. But in your eye, it will make it look gemmy. If you look to your canvas to the side, you should be able to see some kind of like dusty, smoky brush strokes and blue kind of glowing even underneath coming up. Yeah. So that is what you're looking for. You're seeing it on my canvas. You should be seeing it on your canvas. So that's the technique you're attempting is a diffused and smoky background. All right, new step Diffused back. and smoky background.
diffused and smoky background. I'm trying to decide if I want a big D brush or a little D brush. I think I will do, I will start with a D brush this size. You could use a filbert. You could use a bright. This is a number four Raphael texture D brush. This is the synthetic. If you can only get one D brush, um, a synthetic, I think would be the first good one to get because it's more versatile. And then, um, uh, and then either a four or an eight. I'm going to come here and grab my white and a little of my ultramarine blue together. And come over here from the side. And I want this to take up about this much space at its widest. So I'm going to make a little mark here. Kind of let me know where I'm going. Making little brush strokes that are the tree. Be the tree. Pine trees are kind of a triangle shape. They have branches that come out in a radial around the tree, kind of like a little radial going up. So, so they have a bit of a cone shape to them. What is a D brush? A D brush is a brush that is both the shape of a filbert and a round blender. It looks like a D, the letter D. Um, and they were developed by Raphael. On I, they sent me some, and I didn't know if I was even gonna like them. Uh, I gave them to my mom first, who's like the Mikey in my family. Mikey likes it and my mom loved it I actually put him on the show before we expected uh her to and then started calling him the brush so when you hear my mom talk about the brush that's what she's talking about see I'm just kind of capturing the contour and energy of the tree with these little brush strokes I can even come down a little bit and make sure that any branches that I would put out. And I'm just in this sort of not not white, but not our darkest color in the tree either. A lot of times in acrylic, we paint that middle range. You know, in watercolor, you paint lightest to darkest often. And uh, in acrylic, you're almost painting uh, middle dark, middle lights until you paint the final highlights and the uh, final shadows. It's interesting. I'm not putting in the trunk yet. I will put the trunk in in a little bit. Coming over this, just making sure there's more blue. My big worry is keeping my tree straight. Does the tree like to wander off? The tree likes to just go all kinds of places. Making it challenging. It does make it challenging for me. I'm going to kind of try to give myself a line to follow. Sometimes it helps to uh, look at uh, trees in nature to kind of, there we go, a little better. Pull up uh, trees on your phone, look out your window, just to hold the shape of tree in your mind. Like, you, you've got your reference here to help you think of shapes of branches. But even so, that can be really challenging. Getting a little more uh, black and blue in it. The tree's a little darker down lower. Everything's a little darker. I may even have to come in with a bigger brush. 
Now, that's something. How do you know when to change brushes? When it starts to become work to do the task is how I've learned to do it. What I've learned to recognize is in my painting, when I'm struggling to get an area resolved and it feels like um, I'm just stuck in a spot, I'm bringing this black up into the tree a little more. So I do think down here I might go bigger. We'll see. A little more blue in it. Oop, that was put, the wrong one. <laughs> put that down for a second and get a bigger brush. So this is the four and I'm, I'll show you the eight and you'll see what I mean about these two sizes. The eight's super convenient because it does a lot of work very quickly. This is the eight. Um, let's see about another eight over here. It has a little paint right on. I got to clean up. So this is the eight. So same brush, just bigger. Come back to my black and blue gray. And you can see that just makes nice quick work of this low area. So sometimes, you know, uh, people like to do smaller brushes because they're trying to slow down and think. You can, I'm going to come get a little zinc in there. Needs it. Sometimes it'll give me slightly di different values. I'm trying to randomize my brush stroke and very quickly make the pattern. And then what I plan to do is come back in and I finesse what I made. Ah, so you tune the chaos in a little. Yeah. So like I just do this hot mess because I'm like, dude, we got to get it done. And then as soon as that's done, a little more black in here. Making sure I've got some values, right? It starts to have a little thought there. Let's call that a step because that's a good architecture. I may even dry. All right. You and then we'll come back and paint that next layer in where we start finessing our tree. Give it a good try. We're going to see how this, how this goes. So thank you, everybody. I just noticed we have a full house of people here. Thank you so much. And I will ask Sam if she recommends the D4 or 8 in just a moment. And I think that's probably going to be largely based on the size canvas that you use most. But we'll, we'll, we'll have cinnamon. You can check that out. Uh, those, those, you know, our, our website has a lot of cool features, including our, our, uh, our e-commerce store, which you can check out over there. So um, now before we go on, Cinnamon, do you prefer um, the D and the four or the eight? If I could get only one, I'd probably get the eight. Yeah. All right. But I can finesse my brush down into small marks. Um, it's work, but I can do it. Uh, and so I would probably say if I could only get one, I'd get the eight. Sounds like a good answer. Getting a little bit more of my blue here. I add a little shadow or shading. This is with the 4D. The reason I'm using both, though, is I want, you know, to do the smaller marks. And I want to spend less brain cycles on brush control and more on um, the mark I'm making. And I'm going to get that kind of, I'll get a little black on there.
It was nice to start to imply the trunk coming in a bit. You can see it's kind of an inarticulate line. You can use a round brush if this brush gives you any grief. But you can see I can clean up a line pretty easily if it's damp. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of my ochre and my cad yellow together into my burnt sienna. Tap down a little highlight on some of this bark. A little bit of white in there. You can see I just make a nice little rough barky little tree there. Highlight that little outer edge. It goes roof, roof, roof. Because I am a rough little tree. You know me, you know me. Okay, grabbing a little bit more white and my blue and gray together, but it's mostly blue up here. And I'll add some highlights. I love the highlight there on the edge. That really makes them pop. It's fun to do, too. Playing with it is fun to do. This little distant tree is fun to do. Another thing I suggest... Um, is uh putting on environmental things put on like get those pine cones that smell like cinnamon smell like me and uh put on festive upbeat up tempo jazzy holiday music if it whatever that is or or wintry music but upbeat tempo um and so that you know you're keeping your because you can be thinking pretty hard when you're painting as you well know thinking about taking taking stock of your life while arting <laughs> it's a difficult time and uh so making your environment be more cheerful can also help uh stave off any of that uh seasonal depression and anxiety um some gentle things to remind you of as we go into this uh that you know, what defines you is not how much money you have or um, how much you can give, you know, under a tree or, or, or around a menorah or however you give over the season. Uh, please excuse my woefully underinformed theology because i sure. know actually yeah. there's like 30 holidays over there's, the season but so however many. you celebrate yeah a lot of times this time of year is a celebration of abundance and well-being and it's easy to start to feel like you know we're not we're not making it because i don't know whatever it item isn't under the tree or whatever isn't going on that we feel like it should it's just you know abundance comes and goes the harvest is big some years and it's slow other years i think there's some farming wisdom that we lose a little bit in our modern world where we recognize that things are seasonally abundant or seasonal and not every season is like every other season that's absolutely true and it's okay to have, you know, uh, a lower harvest. <laughs> you know, that's something that culturally we don't really allow for. We don't. We don't. 
because you know our harvest is metaphorical and I'm continuing to add more blue into this just as I come down because it's darker down here so even though I'm adding highlights these highlights will have more cool or darker nature to them just making sure you guys know that as we as we go and we're talking about the nature of life one of the things about being creative is that sometimes during the holidays we have that extra gift where we can um, give something that we've made. I know many of you will be making gifts, painting gifts, which is scary to give somebody a painting. That's a scary, scary thing. Right. Give them a little piece of yourself. You're giving them a little piece of yourself. Man, that's harder. It's harder sometimes, you know? It's easy to spend money. Sometimes it's hard to give of yourself. So know that you are not responsible for how somebody receives your gift. It's not a reflection of the painting. If you need support, come by the group. We'll... We'll be mad at him for you. <laughs> we will support you in your supportlessness. <laughs> but know that that's normal. Know that happens to me too. Yeah. Um, I've had my artwork thrown away like it was trash. Just abandoned. Just totally abandoned. Like it meant nothing. That Happens. has happened. And yeah, that was raw for me. But the painting wasn't any less good. Mm -mm. I'm not any less valuable of a person. It, that whole action was about the person who did it. Not about me or my painting. And it's important for you to understand if you have somebody that does not appreciate your generosity, that is a commentary on them. So can you see how I'm darkening the highlights? And I'm darkening again into the blue as I come down here. Because we're just sort of saying this is distant, out of focus, uh, shrubberies. Maybe that branch needed to go up more. I get a little philosophical. Put a little highlight here. And by dispersing little highlights irregularly, what we do is we create this idea that the shrubbery has dappled light falling on it, even in the diffused winter spaces. We still have values. Ooh, Beth Mulligan is saying, they will claim you owe 30 cents was, for a rescheduling fee. Ask CC friend, do not open these texts or links, says Beth. I was reading Believe up on Believe yeah. Beth on that. Do not open text or links. I am now, I literally had the craziest conversation because somebody had called me and they actually were supposed to be calling me, but they weren't identifying themselves properly. And I was like not talking to them and they're like, what's up? And I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking for my private information. I don't know you. I didn't call you. I will now hang up from you and call the business number that I have back and talk to somebody. And if this is real, then that would be fine. Yeah, anybody who calls me and asks to verify my information. Oh, yeah, I call the like, business right back. No, not doing that. Oh, this is good. Stephanie Lohn says, why use ultramarine black instead of Prussian blue and white? First of all, love Prussian blue and white. You know I do. Um, it is because for a period of time, it was just difficult to get. And then I got out of, we didn't buy it for a long time for the student palette. And I try to keep my student palette consistent for at least a year at a stretch. So if I add a new color, I've got to kind of keep it going for a year. And I just haven't had Prussian blue in a minute, but it's an excellent color choice for this. I'm going to just make this a little darker down here. And then I think we're getting there. I do feel like I've got to lift up the branches, though. These look a little bedraggled now. A lot of things can impact your um, painting experience. 
So like for me, um, sitting low or high in relationship to the surface, uh, there's a big world of difference between holding an iPad in my hands and sitting in a canvas. It's not the same thing at all. Even though the process of making art does feel pretty much similar. I'm just adding a few highlights here and there. Get a little blue and black together again. I haven't rinsed my brush. It's got a smidge of white on it. It's just finding that right level of darkness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Come speak with you again. Oh, here we go. Just trying to uh, find those shadows in the branches and create that depth because that depth sometimes helps us see the tree. We still we don't see the sh the the trees for the shadows. We forgot to add to them. It is through shadow that we see light, which I know is kind of deep philosophically, but unfortunately may be a true story. It's a really pretty tree, though. Much more complex than I would have originally thought when looking at this. You know? I was thinking, it's just going to be a little white tree in the background. But man, the tree, <laughs> Silly the you. The tree has, Silly John. has sophistication. The tree is sophisticated. It has layers. It has thoughts. It's a, it's a wonderful little It's little an ogre bit. tree. All right. Let's call that... Uh, have I tried Stephanie who says, have you tried Golden's Azurite color yet? It's an interesting blue. I did not think they could do Azurite in acrylic. So no, I will get that color for sure. Uh, Veronica says, do we offer gift, shop, gift cards at our art store? I think that we were, last time I checked, they were working on it, but I don't have an answer if they're currently working. So we'll find out after the show. You may find out in 24 to 48 hours if we do. Then they'll be on there, <laughs> and 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 we'll work on that. I, I know that we had been talking about it in the past weeks, so it's it's much more of a, a technical question at this point. I know that we have the ability to; we just have to implement it in the store, and that takes a bit of team management effort. So we're going to work on that. Uh, Bree says, I brought a desktop easel, but it, I can't stand for very long. I'm not sure if I like it. I don't know. Maybe painting flat is better for me. Um, so is it a vertical desktop easel or is it an angling? So on a desktop, I like the easel that I can adjust the angle on. Um, and then I like a chair with armrest that I can adjust the height on. I like to be higher than this is low for me in relation to my canvas. I like to be high and overhead on my canvas with a slight angle on it so I have a good kind of view. And then when I paint in a table, I try to take pictures and then look at those pictures to see where I am um, not seeing the forest for the trees, so to speak. All right, I'm gonna grab a little bit of my blue here and a little bit of my ultramarine. No, ultramarine, my zinc. So that's my ultramarine blue and my zinc. And I'm gonna make little Kind of out of focus dots. This is a bit like um, so. I'm just making irregular little shapes, kind of like this is another way to do snow instead of splatters. We're just doing this instead of splatters, guys. Just instead of splatters. And it's also sort of interesting because it'll give it that feeling of, of, of night, nightly snow. Uh, uh, it being uh, slightly later in the day. 
So it's the ultramarine blue and the zinc white, and I'm still using the D brush, and I'm making little tiny marks that um, kind of give that feeling of a distant little snow flurry. And the zinc white's really nice for that. The titanium white can be a little overpowering. Okay, little bits of snow flecks and flurries off in the distance. I think that's good. Let's call that a step. I'm going to sketch my bird in now. I'm going to use my D brush. I'm going to put my glasses on. I may have to change my mind a couple times, but I just need to get some scale going so I can put everything else in. Because he takes up sort of like a largish amount of space. Like if you think in relationship to this tree, we're talking like almost in this scale. And we need to move things over enough so we have room on the tree. I think I'm going to start. This would be where you will use the traceable if you need a traceable. Now, in my life, I found it's easier to make things um, bigger. I'm going to just... Try to get some... Relationship sizing to this. So, I'll sketch out blocks of shapes like the circle of the body right i've got a kind of an egg circle in the body and once i get that in then i can kind of start to think about where everything is in relationship to it now i'm not gritting in today i am freehanding in today You can just see me sort of building out. Now, will you consider doing an oil pastel tutorial here? I am going to do an oil pastel because the watercolor students and the oil pastel students that were excited about that campaigned so delightfully for it. You guys will both have um, lessons coming up. There will be a consistent oil pastel and uh, watercolor series here. So the... The snowman is up. And more will be coming soon. Now I'm not going to worry about the beak yet. I try to get the basic shape of the head so that. You can see I'm sketching quite light even with my paint. can see me adding in a little bit of a wing here. It's just about building up sequential shapes and then applying what you know. And the reason I'm putting the subject in here, I think I'll put the tail down there. nice scaling and that means I've got to kind of thinking about the positioning of the feet 
There we go. Now I have a branch in. So at least I, I've now created a place where we sit and where we exist. I have a sense of our scale. I might need to look at it overhead myself so I can see it. Maybe be a little bigger. I think I'm kind of committed to this size now. That's okay. I'm okay with that. All right. Now I need to kind of plan in my branches. So I'm going to take a little of my black and my thalo green together. And I'm going to come up here. That's maybe darker than I need. I'm still doing my D brush because it's just fine for this. And I'm making little flicking lines. They are going to fan out to create the shape of my little pine here. You can see I'm sort of flicking that out. We're adding a little bit of branch right there. I'm just filling it in. Little fanning, flicking strokes. So this is, we're just seeing this up close, right? And I'm doing this with the black and green because it lets me get my shadow and my silhouette in. I can always lighten up, but this really, um, uh, Dee Dee asked a really cool question about how to protect uh, oil pastels. There is a um, varnish. I was just saying we were probably it's hard to cover multiple ma materials oh. in a single class. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. You can totally answer it. <laughs> but, it but yeah, they make a sealant. They make a, a Sennelier makes an oil pastel nope. fixative just for that, and it doesn't uh, yellow the paper. It doesn't stain anything. It does fix it. I still would put them under glass, framed and matted, mm -hmm. um, just to because they're still delicate. Even they're not as delicate as like say oil pastels where it's like. Oh my goodness, you know, um, I mean, chalk pastels where it's like they practically, if you breathe on the paper, they're gone. They're not quite that delicate, but they still need some extra care. And so framing is a good idea. I'm just continuing to flick out my yeah. branches. Yeah, I don't at all mean to uh, uh, try to shut down questions. Oftentimes I'm... Oh, uh, no, you were... No, I think I think <laughs> that was very smart. I think I even said, hey, let's make sure we stay on track today. Oh, well, you know. You... Uh, I'm sure I gave Don those instructions. <laughs> so just trying to get these together. And then we will use object placement and layering and things to, you know, kind of bring these out and divide these out. Oh, did some brown, but I meant to do black and green. Okay, going to sometimes bring out some little pine things. And I'm sure I will have to lighten these up a lot. I think I'll have to move the beak on the face a little bit. I'm going to go into my eight, but that's just so that um, I'm not having to work as hard for the the filling. You can cover more canvas faster. That's all it is.
And sometimes things are just dark and you've just got to get them kind of filled in solidly enough. And so here I'm just making sure that there's a very dark, dense sort of tree space. Then I'll get back into my four again for my detail work. You just kind of work in that there and just making sure the nice little pine needles. That was fun. I might come in to my background color a little bit and uh, move some of my little bird face. That's really just because I just think it's uh, more turned and bigger. And so that's how I would erase if I needed to erase. Let's grab a little bit more blue. I think I'm going to move the, the body up and out a little bit. Just a little bit bigger. There we go. Better scale. So sometimes what I'm looking in is scaling, like how much scale am I going to need to add to make him as big as he needs to be. There we go. But that gives him enough of that in there to do that. Now I am going to want to come in and add a little bit of my yellow to my green. And a little bit of brown. And then I'm going to come right here and I'm going to start to Uh, the next level, it's still shading, it's still in the shadow for sure. But it's a next level up. 
So that's a little bit of my burnt sienna, my cad yellow, and my thalo green. Just adding a next layer of highlighting up to that. Just adding a little bit more there. I know I've got to get some red in and the ornaments in, but getting some dimensionality does does help. And I haven't even gotten in, like, say, branches of the wood of anything yet. We're just just the smallest amount of I'm just bringing this through here into what will be that. Just a little bit of cad yellow. Print sienna, thalo green. Making coffee? Oh, I love you for that. I can add a little bit of highlighting down here into the dark, dark shadow. Kind of bring the, the, the scruffness of the needles in. Oh, that is not mine. No, no. No, mine has, mine ha this is, this is my cleaning cloth that Bug sent me. Oh, okay. spider. Yes. They're not even close to being the same thing. So weird. And it's so clearly pocket square. It's so weird. You're so weird. Just put in a little, little dimensionality there. And we will be thinking about where these needles are in shadow and where these needles are um, in more of a light. Let's see how we pull that through there. Just making little fan marks. And these are the dark dimensionalities of the leaves. There's a lot, like this tree, there's just a lot going on in your pine needles. You might not have thought of. There we go. John, can I have, I'm going to dry and step. I'm not going to dry and step. I got to wait for John to get back. And that is wild. Okay. Um, Mod Cat Red says, yeah, skin tones can be a bugger, Kaylin. I always follow Sherpa's recipes. Skin tones are a bugger. Um, but only because it, it for artists, it's because we have so much visual information around it, so much stored that we know when we've got it wrong. I was waiting for a step and to dry. You can't step and dry. Step and dry. Step and dry. It's... Let her do that for a moment while we are over here. I'll make sure I haven't... I was making coffee and doing little things around the studio to make sure it's nice for for cinnamon while she paints because I got a little heater on her over there. I was making a little adjustments in here sometimes while we're doing that and I see you guys are chatting away. I'll wander over and do little things in the studio to help her be a little more comfortable. This is a cold day for some reason. We have this, I don't know if anybody's paid attention to the crazy weather and we've got uh, this dip in the uh, jet stream right now that's going to cause this warm air to come in, be unseasonably warm, and it's going to be unseasonably cold. We're going to have these wonderful <laughs> wild weatherness stuff happening. All right. You ready for another step? Yes, I am. I'll continue to do my coffee making. I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red and my quinacridone magenta together. And I'm going to come like right here. Draw a little round red ball. 
and then just paint that whole thing in. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to add a little ball and a little ball. Some little clusters of like berries or something. And come here and I'm going to go ahead and do the full circle. You're going to paint back over some of it, but. I think for the layering of objects, this will be the easiest for you. I'm just using a number six sepia round, and that's just so that um, I have control over my shapes and I can draw. Nice little round shapes. This lets me um, get the color on the canvas and also just think about where they are. I'm just adding a few to just talk about like maybe there's some berries there. Sometimes I'll think of something as I'm going and I'm like, Mm. I think I want this. It's not too bad. All right, I'm going to come in here and grab a little bit of my burnt sienna and my cad yellow. Maybe a little yellow ochre, just something to lighten it up. And just bring some little branching down. Oh, John. Bring some little branching down this direction. Right there. Just also enforce that there. Start thinking about that a bit more. So a lot of times this is really just about making sure that we've got elements that feel perhaps believable to our world building. Get a little bit of red and yellow into that. I did cad red and a little cad yellow. Just stroking that on there too. I like when there's a lot of color in things that you don't expect there to be a lot of color in. And 
I'm going to go over into my white and yellow over here, and I haven't rinsed my brush. So just creating these different little values really makes a big difference. Rinse that out for a second. Let's take a little bit of our burnt sienna over here to our Mars black. I'm going to come in and add some little shadow to the little branch. I like to make it kind of twisted and hot messy. Fun to get the little twist and knots and things in there. Now, this is just because I want a little brown sort of peeking out with my pine needles. It can make a neat effect and I think it's super worth it. All right, let's call that a step, 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 step. No need to dry then? Mm, I think we should dry. Should dry? There is a need to dry. There There's is. a need it's always good. to dry. It's good to dry. To dry. So thank you for all being part of our community and being here with us. What does it say? Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Ah, uh, man. Tuesdays is a good day to paint. It's good, good to be, see everybody out here. Good to be seeing everybody in the chat. And if you haven't joined our chat, please do. It's really fun. Um, a lot of folks come in here. They talk with each other. They learn a little bit about what's going on, um, you know, about what their experiences are painting. Um, it's really, it's really lovely just to to have the community there. And, and I highly suggest if you haven't tried, join it in. You ready for your next step, then? Yes. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow into my orange and brown. And interestingly enough, introduce that over to my green. And I'm going to start to using my number four D brush, paint little highlights. I'm going to add a little brown here and kind of imply that there's little bits of it going into the pine needles. See what I'm doing? Oh, I like that a lot. Put a little bit of white on there. A little white, a little yellow. Just really painting it, right? And then maybe a little um, kind of green and... Blue and white. Well, 
that's just wild, isn't it? Grab a little bit of my blue and white. Still using my D brush just because it's convenient, not because it's just some magic reason. It's just convenient. A little more brown into the blue. And we're going to just paint a little snow. On that branch. And we get a little bit of the white. Know some of the pine needles. Just brushing out a little bit of highlighting there to see how I like it. Sometimes I'll do things to be like, I have a way I want to go, and then I'll think about it and I'll be like, do I like it? I just want to say thank you to Bree. Bree! So nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just a thought for a second, and I don't mind it. I'm going to go into my yellow and green and maybe even get into this right here, my brown and yellow and Kind of come off my branch with pine needles. It's a weird thing, but you can. You kind of like make it look like the. The pine needles are. Coming off the wood. Very light here. I'm adding highlights, but they're they're minimal, right? I can get a little more blue even involved in that, and so little pops of white. Just brushing that there. Sometimes I'll get more blue. Go ahead and get a little green on here and Yeah, that's going to look good. But I think to finish it, I will have to paint the balls and then I can layer them into the tree. So let's give us a new step, babe. New and step. I'm going to use a little bit of my dioxazine. No need to dry it? No need to dry. Right. Dioxazine purple, cad red, quin magenta. Dioxazine purple, cad red, quin magenta. Come right here into this bottom ball and kind of through the middle, creating a dark value. Can a little bit there, and arcing up there. Well, I'm at it. I'm going to add this dark value to my berries. I'm just adding this dark value so that when I come in and do highlights, what it'll do is it will make those reflections seem. You can see here, just even. Where I have a little bit of the reflection. Oh, I gotta itch my back. That's.
I, it's an artist. <laughs> tag is a tag. <laughs> I'll take it. It's, itchy, a, itchy, itchy. it's a back scratcher. Right, I'm gonna add itchy, a little. Itch. I'm gonna add a little more red right there, and you can kind of see it even coming in with that little glow. So that's how we're gonna get these glowing, shiny, shiny little Christmas bulbs. This is such a pretty painting. This could have been a whole series designed for the paper and card market. I tell you right now. <laughs> Would have been huge. Fantastic in uh, fabric too. So just trying to get that dark. Nice shading. Doing it on the berries too. Just to make sure I've got a good dark value. Then I can come in with my magenta and my cad red. And come to the top of this ball with a little of that. A little around the edge. Kind of on the bottom. Little spots going back into the bulb there, a little bit on its belly. But you want a lot of shadow for that to work. Little bulb on top of the bulb. 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 On top of the bulb, bulb, bulb. Bulb, you know, bulb, bulb. Freeze, freeze thoughts here. I, it, you know, it. your intention is as good as, to me in my heart as if it actually happened. So I appreciate it, Bree. Thank it's, you, Bree. You know, we we love that you guys love us. We love you, you know, the... The dollars do make the lights stay on, and we appreciate them for that. But know that your love is really what matters, and we appreciate that more. Uh, Shannon uh, Yanes wants to know, is this a three-hoot? And I agree with everything John just said, Bree. Absolutely. And the teacher's Four super fast. focused on, like, teaching. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> it's like, what did, what did you miss? What did I miss? I'm just ca <laughs> Why I'm not just generally giving the chat? I get stun locked, and then I just, you know. So what hoot is this? Three. This is a full three. I'm, it, it's a challenge. I'm going to come in and give some red. We got to see him now, so I'm going to give some red to my, my other cardinal. We'll do uh, docks, purple, and cad reds. Good starting space. Because I'll be able to see the weight of him, how much um, visual space that he holds on the canvas. Look, I'm going to be honest, he's going to gain weight. Chances are he's going to get fluffier. It's been known to happen. From Jon Snow to bees, I've been known to feed the, the subjects of my art quite well. So I'm just trying to get the shape and contour and weight of the cardinal. A little bit of tail coming back up in there. A little bit of fat going back up to the tail. Little wings coming back in.
just bring a little bit of that up. But there. And just start to work out the beak. And kind of see that I will build into my figure slowly with the paint. And I think I'm still going to need a bigger beak. And then if I need to like remove anything, I can do that. Oh, thank you, Peggy. Thank you so much. Sometimes I will erase as I'm going and be like, oh, that's too much or it's not enough. And so that's what you'll see me doing is like, may just be easier to get into it in a minute when I start to fluff it out. But now I can kind of see my bird in my world. Oh, Peggy, thank you so much. Peggy, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. All right, let's continue on. We'll let this have a little bit of a dry as we continue to paint us some ornaments, right? Let's grab a little Doc's purple. I'm going to come to the back side of this metal ornament, and I'm going to treat my Doc's purple almost like it's black. It's not, but chromatically here, it will read to the eye like it was. I think the shadows on Christmas ornaments or glossy hand-blown glass balls, garden balls, it doesn't really matter what kind of balls it is, is um, as anchored by the shadows as by the reflections. Just lightly dust it here. And then while I'm here, I'm going to take my round, my number six sepia round, and I'm going to go ahead and get a little purple and red in that. So that's the Quinn red, the Cad red, a little Doc's purple. It gives me a very nice Merlot. 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 Am I so strange? I don't know. I'm going to find out soon. That'll be fun. Thank you, John, for being with me today. And thank you to everybody oh, thank you. who came early today for today's class. I appreciate it. I've just been finding that I'm a little more waked up earlier in the day is all it is. That's all that's going on. Just waked up more early in the day. Put that brush down. And then I'm going to come in and... Take a little bit of my Quinn and my Cad Red. And even a little bit of zinc into it. That was Quinn Red, Cad Red, and a little zinc white. A curve line back here. So the zinc lets me lighten an area but still leave it in a darker value set, which I really, really like. That does help me later 
when I'm trying to express what's happening in the light. See how those are getting red, 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 red? All right. Now, I want to brighten up some of the highlights in there, so I'm going to be a little more cad red, a little less. Did you see what Brooke was asking there? No, I did are not. Are you staying with the earlier times, do you think? Um... For for a minute, if it's not if it's if as long as you guys are okay with it, um, it doesn't throw you all off. Uh, it, my it, big worry is California, um, uh, but as long as California is okay, I think we're okay. And come right here, isn't that such a funny thing? But I think about the time zones, so it's really about trying to get it into. I figured out I can't get it to an Australian time zone when I'm at all a decent teacher. <laughs> So sometimes some time zones are very difficult because I've got to go to like eight at night for all of us to be able to watch it. Um, but uh, uh, this time zone seems to be pretty good. I could maybe go an hour later and it would still be pretty good. I'm adding a little. This is just more CAD red this time. And you see if you add little sparkles of it in the back. That's a huge deal. I can't read the response. If you'll read the responses to me, babe. This is a little magenta and Catarine. The responses in terms of? The times. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Yeah. No, I... I, I Too soon. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Too that that's, soon. I think that that's... And, you know, we're only going to get a small sampling of people to talk about. That's this. true. So, you know. A little bit there. In just for a <laughs> we, what, what's funny? Bree says, I'm great with the earlier times. It gives me something to do while I'm at work. <laughs> you know, what's funny is is when your manager in chat says, yeah, I feel the same way. We have had that happen. We have had that John happen. is not just, <laughs> no, I'm not just speaking out of turn. That's actually a real thing that has happened. I'm going to switch brushes to my round now. Going through a very similar um, Brooke process. says his time is fine. A little more cad red over to my zinc white mixture from earlier. I mean, it's just about finding the edges of the berries. So if I do this little berry and I round its front. And the Christmas balls, like, let me know where I want to put my berry reflections at. And depending on what's more red, pushes it more forward. It's actually kind of fun to see what berry will take the lead. I'm going to take a little of my cad red over to my zinc. And I'm going to make little highlights. Just cad red and zinc white.
That's just wonderful when you see those just start to glow. Sometimes I'll come back with my darker color and just make sure that any weird shadows that I need, like on that bloop. that back some pure cad my round brush A little bit darker. There it works. It's wild rinsing out. I'm gonna get a little bit of my just my cad red and a touch touch of Quinn Magenta. Just start to red up my berries a little. How red are your berries? Are your berries? They're very juicy, juicy. Juicy, juice. I juice up the berries. I juice them up. Juice them up. Get them juicy, juicy. Not super fun. All right, let's dry everything. Everything, everything, let's dry Thoroughly everything, dry everything. Uh, and uh, does acrylic medium dry uh, slow the drying time? Some do. This particular one does, uh, but not all of them uh, do. So you should read the uh, Virgo. You should definitely read the bottle to find out if your particular medium extends the drying time. Um, and sometimes they call that opening the drying time or retarding the drying time. Um, so all those things can be there. So give me just a moment here. I gotta, sw I gotta switch my recorders. So hold on a second. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. wait. You gotta hold on a second too. I'm gonna switch off. Mm. Okay, now we can go again. Now are you ready? For, you ready for your new step now? Yeah. All right. So we're about halfway through, I think. Maybe a little further than halfway. Maybe two thirds of the way. It's gonna go pretty fast from here. Um, we're gonna continue to put in work on our branches. Then we get to be all paying attention to our cutie cute bird. I'm gonna start again with my number four D brush. You could use round. You could use a different brush. Anything you want. It is okay. I'm gonna add a lot more. Burn sienna to my green. I'm going to grab a ton of cad yellow. And then that's more green in there. And white. There we go. So lots of colors, right? So many. So many. A little of my green gold, maybe. A 
little white over here. A little white. Sometimes I'll wipe off my brush because I might be carrying too much paint in it. Just a few pine needles. I love layering them out. They layer up so well. Maybe a slightly darker green for back here. A little more in the green gold. Go over to my white, and I might get some blue involved in it. Some snowy needles, right? Might have gotten a little excited with my snowy needles here, but if you just go and you go, grab a little yellow, a little white. Look at those go. It's fun. It's just sometimes it's just fun to put down the paint and get back into my green gold. A little bit of my blue and white back here. So that like lets some highlights show up, but they're kind of muted because they've got the blue in them. And you can see I'd be lighter in that back. A little more blue, a little more white. Get a little yellow into there. Get a little more yellow. It's fun to do because I'm constantly looking for these different colors. Because pine needles are super interesting. I'd have gotten a little expressive this time, but I don't care. It's okay. Alrighty, let's give everything a dry just so it knows where it lives. That seems like a good idea. Okay. Oh, so my microphone was there. Be a little wonky. So yeah, we'll take on a new step here. 
make sure we get that if you guys are looking for resources uh, they're on the website yeah and um, just, I was just reading here yeah you guys can always use test spots um, whenever you're 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 testing out new materials like that's uh, that is a very good idea do you need another step there? Yes, I do. All right. So we're going to add some snow. Maybe some pine cones. At least a pine cone. Let's do a little bit of black. I've got my D brush. I'm going to come right here. And at the top, I'm going to go dot. 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 I like to build the texture or outline of my pine cone. The contouring of it, and then I build it up in layers. So that's why, let me show you in my pad what I'm doing. It's kind of cool. So how I get my pine cone is that I use, you could use a filbert here. But the top of it was to have a shape. Then I can use the brush. See how the brush makes the shape? Now if it comes to a point down here, then I just think about the contour of the pine cone. I just added more water so you can see the brush strokes better. And then on the paper, you can see when I'm coming in, how I see how that's going to make those pine coney little spaces seem so good. I think I'll put another one here, I think. And then I'll put one facing up up here. They're pretty easy to put in. So once I get the shadow in and the shape, the cone shape, the rest of it comes in pretty fast. So now I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna. And then I'm going to come to the base. And add little edges that do show where the brown is kind of popping out from the cone. So it can be mentally taxing to paint a pine cone, kind of in the same way it can be taxing to paint a rose. But when you piece together or puzzle together the little cone shapes and then highlight everything, you're like, oh. When I'm here, I change the angle of my brush so that um, it can get each individual cone kernel. And then I'll do that everywhere. That by the time we get snow on there and highlights on there, a lot of times that's all it takes to really get the pine cone. Especially if they're open like these are where the seeds have fallen out. I think this one is going to give me the most grief just because it's a weird angle. But I can totally do it.
it's just important to remember that you're not painting what you can't see. And I know that sounds hard to understand, but a lot of times where I see new students just run into trouble is they're painting parts of the image that are not visible to them, but they know exist, that they're present, but they're just like, you know, they, 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 because it's like they know the pine needles from behind the branch are there. They, they know objects are there, even though another object might block it. In some part of their mind, they're trying to paint the part that you couldn't see. And so it's very hard when you're new at the painting to paint only the parts that you can see. Now I'm going to take a little bit of blue down to my black and uh gray grit mix from earlier and i'm gonna add some white to it i'm still using my four brush and i'm gonna come here and add some snow to a pine branch snowy pine branch snowy Snowy pine branch. Yeah, these are not just keywords. They're real things we're doing today. So these are just little, little banks of snow that have landed here and collected. Generally that's about wind direction, uh, where the snow's coming in from. Interesting. I don't want to join the snow. Well, it does do a good job of pulling the whole painting together. All right, we're going to let that snow bank clump across these objects. Okay, so that's what I'm doing is by pulling that snowbank over the Christmas ball, it unified that space that was worth doing, even though I'm like, ah. Oh. Little bit on the berries. Little bit on the top of the pine cones. Just let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. You're painting. Let the weather come in. Now, here I might even kind of come back into the pine needles just to imply that the snow kind of went back into them a bit. There you go. Wow, look at that. It's snowing. I'm just reading the chat. If you're wondering, what did you just look at? I'm looking at you guys. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of my white over here and mix a shade lighter. 
and come here and it's not white white but it's pretty bright and it's gonna let us see the snow when you see the snow And I can add a little blue there. So it's okay to have a little snow personality. Like a little personality. Personality. In my snow, 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 snow. Snow, 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 snow. Sorry. Just coming along and adding highlights. But these are sort of like, it's dimensionality, right? But it's not the lightest color. There's still room for the lightest color. And that's the thing that can be so hard for us to do is leave the shadows. We want to remove all the bad from the world. As we should. We want to take out all the shadows, put light on everything. But sometimes to see things, you need the contrast. You need to see them as they are. You need to see them as they are. Because, you know, you can get blind to it. Just adding slightly lighter highlights to my snow. Sometimes I add little bits of, I guess you could think of it as like little snowflakes. So this one is just slightly bluer. It's a shade lighter than the original snow we put out. And you will love it. Ah, uh, shade lighter. See, we're just building up little highlights on the snow. I do. So while hmm. you're doing that, I'm... Uh, making how, how coffee? You, I am making coffee. I'm wondering how your tummy's doing. You a little hungry? I could get there, but I could wait till after I finish the painting. Okay, I just I have a little peanut butter snack here if you wanted a little, I little quick I wouldn't bite. hate it, but you'd have to turn me I'm going to hit you mute, and I'm going I'm to let you have a bite. And I'm going to brush these out a little bit like they're pine needles because... So she's going to continue to... To brush this out, I'm going to mute her well, so she can take a bite of this while she's going because we're going to be here for a little bit. She's just going to continue to brush these out. You're going to grab a bite there while you're doing that, Cinnamon. And so we're going to continue to brush this out in the, in, uh, in direction, just little nibbles. <laughs> I got her a little, little uh, um, just toast with peanut butter on it so that she'd have, you know, a little extra pick-me-up while we're in the middle of this so her energy doesn't drop and dip, which sometimes happens here. You could feel it? Oh, no. Um, sometimes it can. No, you know, what happens is I'm trying to get in here to get her a little bite before energy drops. This is this is me making sure that uh, that everybody stays energy up for this. And... It's a, it's a big painting, as she says. She's getting a little buy a little little drink of kombucha there, and you know, it's a. If, this is a good thing. You guys need to take care of yourself too. Don't feel don't don't feel bad if you need to hit pause, go get a little snacky snack, a little drink, a little you know, it's okay. Everybody's got to do that in the middle of it. So, I think you know, even just having a, a bite there can make a big difference. You want to make this a new step here. We're still on the same step. Yeah, I'm gonna get my that was light, just a mid light, light, snack. my light, light snow color. It's not all the way white, white, but it's pretty close. That was exactly what I needed, and I'm gonna make little floops of snow, little floops of snow, little floops of snow. 
On the tree it glows, happy little bird and I. It's really funny. I sing a lot. I don't have any musical talent, but I do tend to hum and sing when I'm happy. And I'm going to add some white pine needles to this. Some more snow. See, just, just a little bit to say, oh, ooh, some got frosted. Because that'll happen sometimes, right? They'll get frosted and then they'll. What you'll see me doing is I will skip around. I leave so much of the shadow available. Okay. I'm leaving all my values. I don't paint out the work that I just did. I, I'll try to get back in here and, you know. See, not as much there. Look at that. Oh, so happy. Things I like to paint today. And then we just put that there. Sorry to be quiet. I'm just concentrating. Just adding little highlights. Thinking about my snow, right? I'm going to think about it. Because like everything else, it's sometimes it's in shadow. Sometimes it's in the light. No, Nikisha's is like, are these snow clouds on branches? Nature do repeat a shape. I will tell you that nature does come in with shapes sometimes and just repeat them and repeat them. I am now going to get my round brush out. This is my number six Raphael sepia. And I'm going to come in and get a little of my yellow ochre and my burnt sienna together. And now I'm going to come through and highlight some of my pine cone edges. And it'll start to pull the pine cone out. Fun to piece them together. Just a little burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Hmm? Okay. I am gonna drink my coffee. I'm gonna see if it's okay. Deb would like to know if you'd like to rent John to look after you. Uh, yeah, no, totally. We sent him out on service calls. <laughs> that be cool? Have stone hands come look after you. I feel like that probably would be our most book service. Like I've been online 10 years and have had the blessing to receive a lot of little peeks into everybody's life. You know, what's going on, what they're doing and everything. And what I have learned is that um, uh, some of the dudes out there are tough partners. I think that's what I've learned. 
Some of the dudes are tough partners. Well, partners are tough partners. Not all. And, but I definitely have gotten that, that feedback. Mine is opposite of John. Yeah, they do come in flavors, don't they? Uh, it, and it's so funny because, like, uh, my mom has always been with a handy dude. Like, my dad was super handy. And, well, I don't know that my mom's second husband was handy. But he put his hand to things and did them. I think he mostly broke things. And then, you know, uh, now John Little, very handy. And I'm John, very handy. Handy guys. I apparently like a handy guy. It's a feature for me. I like a man that apparently when I was watching Gilligan's Island, I looked at all those dudes and I was like, the professor is my dude. I mean, seriously, though, the professor is my dude on Island, on Gilligan's Island. I thought Gilligan was so sweet and such a good person. And I thought the skipper he definitely had a good backbone and strength. But I was like, the professor was it for me. I'd have fought Ginger to the ground for that dude or Marianne. A guy could build a nuclear bomb out of a coconut. He had, he had coconut skills. He did, man. He was anybody just... anybody who can turn take a, take a coconut and turn it into a right. radio. That's back a, on to this next. Got one some here. skills for sure. So we're just creating this little sort of shading on these. What it is in pine cones is you really only see their little shelfy bits. They have kind of this little odd little flip that comes out. You paint them a lot, you get better at painting them. It will all come together though on the white lining. There you go. So that one's doing pretty well too. All right, now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take this color and get it over into my snow color, which had the, some blue in it and some white. We're going to put some of that on the cone down here, babe. Oh, I'm going to... Uh, John. Down right there. Sorry. We bragged on you and then we got you, gave you the yips. Isn't that crazy how they come in? I wonder if I should do a pine cone short. There we go on that. And then I'm going to want to take a little bit of my white and blue and black, but it's almost pure white. We're just putting reflections on there. What you think of that, sir? I think it's pretty cool. That's what I think. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm going to leave that be. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I feel like we got it fairly far into the project. 
I'm loving it. I'm going to sip my coffee if we have any questions. Let's see I mean, here. Dry, take questions, what? do the whole thing, run an ad, whatever they're going to make us do talk do about the? YouTube. Oh, you're, you're going to do the drying first? No. no. Just getting it. Just getting it. So you so what? Talk about your hoot rating and what is this and how this how that all works. So here. three hoots. I have a rating of one to three hoots. I could probably make it five at this point anymore. When I started YouTube ten years ago, I was like, well, beginners kind of come in stages of. I've never put a brush to canvas. I painted ten or twenty paintings, so I understand some concepts and terms and basic operation. To um, I need guidance through every step, but I'm ready for some more challenging. Uh, paintings like three hoop paintings so um, in art generally if you have a teacher explaining every step and every mix and every element that is always focused towards beginners um, and but obviously this is not the same as like my one hoot q-tip tree rainbow painting you know that you can do in much less time with much less focus <laughs> Um, so that's why I broke it up into these stages because I feel like beginners start out with I got to figure out how to get paint on the brush and on the canvas and how all the colors mix and all the stuff I can learn all the stuff and then they've got I want to paint a bunch of stuff and learn all the techniques and then they've got now I've got to take all these techniques and put them together in a really meaningful way and then from there we're ready to start doing the um, design original work and we may even do a series next year where we go through the design process and talk about how do we find design but I don't know. It's not a promise. It's a thought I'm having. Mm, that makes sense. Though. Mm. But that's why there's a hoot rating. Just to give you guidance. It'll let you know time. Like a one hoot is generally an hour. or Two hoots two, uh, between an hour and a half to two hours. And it uses a few more colors and techniques. And a three hoot might have zinc right. Different techniques. Lots of tools. Deep brush. Three hours. Bigger canvas. They're all super doable. They just may require more of you. And by the way, it's physically and mentally exhausting to paint. So if you didn't, no one told you that. By the way, did you know that this is exhausting and hard? Physically, <laughs> I actually have had sports injury in my shoulder. I paint so much. I periodically have to go do physical therapy and ice and work my shoulder. Um, this is this is a real thing. It uses a lot of mental spoons. There's a lot happening here. So if you feel tired after a painting session, that's normal and that's okay. So, whoosh, whoosh. Whoa. One second. Sorry, I had a I had sneeze. Seasons. Hold on a second. One more sneeze, I think. So, cool though. Okay, I'm go. really glad that you guys voted acrylic because acrylic was the three hoot and uh, I'm glad that you because I had it set up as the past the oil pastel would be a one hoot and the watercolor was kind of a two hoot and this was a three hoot and I really wanted to do this one this season so thank you for and voting on acrylic next step 12 12 12 back to the d brush and the round brush i go probably going to be most of the bird in the four raphael textor d brush uh the number six sepia i probably will get into my um uh grainer if i can find my grainer don't see my grainer that's silly of course i have a grainer a grainer is a brush that allows you to do certain feather work and everything. All right, I've got this one here. So generally, you'll know them because they have um, little hairs kind of pieced out of them. And it's in the shape of a filbert with these little hairs pieced out. So it makes nice fine lines. And we do have them in the store. They exist. And you can make your own with scissors. So don't feel stuck. I think I might use one of those. All right. Shall we? Shall we begin? I'm going to take a little yellow over red. to where I had some brown and I'll add a little cad red to it. And bring this little beak in. Sometimes the beak helps me find the face. I need to find the face a little bit. Bring that down a little bit. Okay. 
That's pretty awesome. Everything is awesome. All right, let's think about where we're going to put this little eyeball. Sometimes I like to just come in and have a little bit of moment there. Just be thinking about stuff. Now I'm going to come here and also at this moment think about that he's got to have little feeties to stand on. Right? That's that's how they, they land. So from the line I'm going to come up the leg about halfway and sort of thicken that out. I'm going to thicken a bit that would go off the back of the branch. Just making sure I've got enough of a foot here. Hmm. They do sometimes have a little claw that will show, but I don't know there's going to be a payoff for that, so I may not put it on. See, so I just want the, the feet to go around. Oh, thank you. Beautiful so paintings. <laughs> I like that very much. Thank you. Get that nice little cardinal face in. Little cardinal feet in. There's a blue cardinal, Kayleen? I thought that was a blue jay. Is that all? Is there a whole blue cardinal? Because I, I would lose my mind know. for that. That'd be crazy. Okay. We just all got just super distracted by that, right? Who's going to get fat? He is. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red over to my doxazine purple. And it's just a nice way to kind of darken the red, but keep it red. And underneath him on the belly underneath, of course, would be in shadow. And I might do the little little edging here and the reason you see me do the little edging is like piecing out those little feathers really works on birds because they have they get little roughs they get roughs roughs a little bit more purple on here and I'm going to come kind of on the underside of the tail there A little bit more red there. No, I'm going to get a little more purple. Sometimes it helps me to kind of set some of my wing with a shadow. I think with birds, the directionality of the feathers was everything. Kind of see, creating that wing there. I'm 
Now I need to take this leg back a bit. Into Mr. Bird pants because that's how we know the positioning of the body. And grab a little bit of red. A little bit right here, kind of, a little bit of red. Let's work it out slowly. And then dry brush coming back. I love to paint birds. I love to paint them. I love them when they, uh, the chunk boy and the tin tin boy, but I think he's going to go chunk. I just chunk everybody. I just have to, apparently, in my soul, I have this deep urge to feed y'all. <laughs> so, let's try this. Have some coffee. So, we'll just try this here. Get through the... Have the coffees and the enjoyments. And thank you guys for all of the support in here. Um, we really do... So, we do appreciate all of it. I was just reading up on the Blue Cardinals behind here. It's kind of interesting how there are different... Different birds... And a bird of a different color is a different name, and uh, sometimes they're not different. Like, vastly different birds are called the same thing. I don't know. Just weird biology stuff. I was watching some of Cinnamon's YouTubery shows talking about how, you know, like, everything turns into crabs or turtles in evolution. It's, uh, I don't know. If you're into that kind of thing, it's neat. Looks like she's about done dry. What's that? It's in the cup. My grainer's in the cup of watercolor brushes, which is on that back table. Oh, okay. You go get you a grainer? Yeah. Yeah, grab me a grainer. I'll show you why. Yeah, I've got the bigger grainer, but I want the smaller grainer. Step 13, which is definitely not the step we will be finishing on. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, br uh, a watercolor brush cup on the white. Uh, they should be on the white drawers. If it's not, I'll get by with one. the one I have. Maybe they're beige. That brush cup, I think I just left it in there last time. Because I was going to use it, and then I might not have. I might have really, really misplaced it, but really, really misplaced it. Nope, it's there! <laughs> Alright, so what this is, is this is a 3 8 Filbert Grainer by Princeton's Velvet Touch. It's a really nice handle. Feels really lovely. If you haven't ever touched these handles, I wish, like, I this would be a finish I would ask on a brush line if I did it because it's just a nice feel. This brush does a lot of things. Let me show you real quick why I care. Sometimes it's hard in painting to get lines, fine lines, especially like that. Can you zoom in on this, babe? Thank you. So again, see how even though it's a dry brush, it's a fine line. And then if I get it wet, you can really see the fine lines. See how they are? That is really going to help us on our little birdie pants. The other thing is the shape of it. One of the things I found I can do is with this brush, do some pretty detailed little feather moments. Where I can draw little feathers and like hint them in. See how that almost creates that hint of the layering of feathers? So it's a way to get a more realistic effect on, on your avian little friends with, with very little work. Now, if I had a D brush, I could probably do something similar. Yep. Almost exactly similar, John. And then 
Mm, even better. So this is why you play, right? The reason you play with your toys is so that you go, oh, wait, do I have a better toy? I have a better toy. I better use a better toy. Uh, Vanessa is like, I don't see it. This seems way more idiot. I intermediate are almost like expert. So to be at an expert level or even an intermediate, Vanessa, you would need to be able to look at a trip photograph and know how to compose it, what to edit in and out, what colors to mix, how to mix them, everything about that construction process without any advice from anybody else. Um, experts uh, generally have um, a ton of information that they carry themselves. The reason that this is a class for a beginner is because all the steps are being explained, the colors are being explained, the tools and the why. Um, and I try to rate these into stages of beginner. So I have one who that's, I haven't picked up a brush. I don't know what I'm doing at all. One who beginner. And I highly recommend taking the free beginner acrylic painting course. It'll save you two years of learning just right off the top where of just failing and like going through hardships and stuff. It just been doing this 10 years online. I've listened to a lot of beginners. So that whole course is about making your start easier, taking a couple years off of that. After that, you're going to do two hoots pretty easily. and then. 20 or 32 hoots in, you're going to start doing three hoots. You won't be ready to compose work naturally yet. You may not be ready to do your own original stuff. You may still need to know how do I construct these more complex things. But if I, if teachers like myself won't get in and do a two or three hour lesson, beginners can't get past that last spot. And believe it or not, you're learning so much about how this painting is constructed by seeing me do it in real time at this, at this pace and at this depth of explanation. So that is why, but you're right. It's a more challenging painting for a beginner. Um, I think it's so important for beginners to recognize the how long that first stage is so you don't get frustrated yourself too soon. There's a long stage of being a beginner in art and then a long stage of being an intermediate and then a long stage of being confident. I, I don't even like to call myself an expert. There's so much to know in art and people will all the time because I know so much about the material science. It's just the world of art is a deep world, I think, personally. All right, I'm going to use this D brush, I think. And I'm going to begin by taking a little bit of my CAD red and my CAD yellow. Oh, yeah, I think so. Did, did I step and then talk like a, did I monologue like a villain for a while? Okay. Well, I'm adding a little bit of this orange to the chest and kind of, kind of maybe floofing him out a little. He's about to have eaten caterpillars all summer. Now on the cheek, I'm going to come back at an angle like this and kind of rock this back. That's going to help me shape the cheek a good bit too. And then I'm going to come right here and start to work this through. Now on the back here, we're going to start to kind of bring a little highlight. That's that first little bit to the back. I might add a little bit more. Um, magenta into the little red mix that I have there and you can see it goes much more burgundy and I'm bringing the brush back on the filbert with the point side down it's going to help it leave those little feather marks that make such a strong impression for us I might even get into some black up here. It's so strange, but I might. And then I'm going to pull this back. See how we did that? And that creates that little first kind of line of flight feathers. I 
I'm going to get into a slightly lighter. And I will make a fine line coming back. These are fine lines coming back and a slightly lighter red that's going to catch the edge of those feathers that could take flight. So what we're doing is we're just giving us some feathers that could take flight. Now as I come back here, I may start to change that little curve a little bit and then let's pull that back. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on acrylic April coming up. My thoughts are I am very excited to do it. Um, I think I'm going to get into the filming of it probably earlier this year. Uh, I am doing one that I had wanted to do for a long time. Um, but hadn't because I, because I, I, I like, I don't know, maybe I'd, I, I, I think what it is is I feel up to teaching it this year. Like, I'm ready for it, if that makes sense. It's not getting you guys ready for that one. It's me getting ready for it. And I think, I think you're going to love this year. But yeah, we will be. And if you don't know, Acrylic April is a 30-day painting challenge that I do for free with my community. It doesn't cost extra. April 1st to April 30th, we get together every day. And we paint an 8x8 painting. I use the same colors and same brushes for the whole month. And we paint an 8x8 painting every single day. And by the end of the month, you are significantly better at painting a topic. We've done flowers. We've done loose daily painting style. We've done water. Uh, we've done abstract. We've done so many themes. And so you have to wait a little closer to the month to know the theme. There's a group on Facebook. It's pretty awesome. You can see past years. Um, and there's books for this online on Amazon. You can buy the book. Oh, and if you guys were waiting on the Bloom book, it's out. The new book is out. All right, continuing on. I'm going to get a little more red into this with the magenta. And I'm going to paint just a little bit of that right there. And then a little bit of an edge. And then I'll kind of pull that in. And I want to keep it dark underneath. And that's how I'm going to keep that tail where it needs to be. Shall we make it another step, sir? Just get out of the step as soon as possible. I'm adding a lot more yellow to my cad red. I'm painting the back side of my D brush. And I'm adding a highlight right there to the chest. Which I do very much like to do. A little bit on the back of that wing. And a little bit right there. Sometimes it's just nice to give yourself a little bit of fun color. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my red, my quinacridone red, and my cad red. I'm going to brush back a little bit of the underbelly feathering. Bring it up on the inside left edge a little bit. Look at that color. Just red on red on red. What color are you? I'm so red. Red, red, I'm so red. Now I get a little purple involved. Bring that in the tail because that's going to create that undershading. A little bit in the purple here, and we're dusting it on that inside edge. You guys can do this, by the way. I know sometimes these projects seem big, and they are, and you do got to build up stamina for it, but you're capable of more than you know.
and bring a little more red into that little bit of the feathering. No, oh, I love his little cheeks. His little cheeks is so cute. So cute, his little cheeks, his little feathers are so cute. We're just laying him in. Do you wipe or pinch your brush on a rag after you paint before you reload the brush with paint, says Bob. Great question, yes. Yes. I, am, I have a towel with me at all times. And I absolutely do uh, often, between rinsing and reloading wipe my brush and do it for a couple of reasons yes to get the water down to the lower amount i'm looking for for heavy body paint but even more importantly the second reason is on a round brush drops of water will sometimes run down and surprise you and drop on your painting and ruin it so i'm in a habit of wiping the whole handle even if i don't squeeze or pinch the brush head even if it's just a towel going down the um, handle of the brush i do that okay let us come to the face i'm gonna grab a number one princeton select liner i'm gonna get a little bit of my yellow and some glazing medium because it will help it blend and flow better i'm gonna go ahead and add a little of that yellow to the top have that beak. I'm going to go into my orange that I had over here. A little more orange. And then I'll get my orange into that red and purple that I have over here. So it's red and purple over there. And you'll see that gives me a slightly muted orange that I can bring into the lower beak. And at the joint of the top beak to the lower beak. Just shading that in. That might get some just yellow here. And right in the center of that low beak, I'm going to tap out a little bit of my yellow. Just making a little bit of shading. Now I'm going to come here with my number four Raphael D brush. I'm going to grab some red and come right up to my black line. And then I'm going to kind of bow that out just a little bit and come around the beak. Around the face a little. And then down. And that's just so that I can do the little pin feather work I'm about to do. So I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and my black together. I'll go ahead and get my glazing medium involved just so it doesn't dry, but not because I, I need extra blending or anything. I just need a little extra time before it dries. We're doing really good, guys. I'm tapping this brush up and down, and what you're going to see me do is come in and not just do the markings, but notice that I'm making an irregular line. These are the little pin feathers around the face, and it is of benefit to find a way to get the patterning. And then I'll flick out underneath the little chin I'm flicking out. And come around here. And 
Yeah, a little bit of wiggle there. That's not too bad. I'm gonna come in and get my gray. That was right here. I used some glazing medium. I'll wipe my brush out on my paper towel. That's because I don't want any excess paint. I want a fine, fine, fine amount of paint. I'm going to come back and put my eye in. Now, when I do it, it's going to be too thick, even with all that prep work. So I will have to do a thing where I paint out my line and, to, and paint it out to get it as thin as I need it. That's my struggle. may not be your struggle. You're in no way required to participate in the struggle that I'm in. I'm going to take a little bit of my white. Make sure there's no hidden drops. That's a little reflection on that beak there. Just a little bit on the forehead of the cutie patootie. I don't even mind if it's a little yellow. And this will get thinned out too, by the way, as I paint. So it's like the finest hairline you can imagine. It's crazy. And I get a little bit of red to start that now. can see by coming around the beak a little bit it turns his head just a touch there we go see how sometimes you can paint the line thinner by removing, then you can, by putting it out thin enough. Right, so you can kind of go back in and touch, touch and, and re-edit the line. Yeah, and I, I'm very dependent on that. I'm going to let you know right now. That is a necessary thing for me. Now I'm going to bring a little white highlight to the back side of the eye. And then also on the eye. Look at that. And her pretty. Her so pretty. Her pretty. Her pretty. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my black and brown. Maybe even a little yellow ochre. I mean, a uh, cad yellow. Can I just paint? Top of the foot. Well, it's crazy how just coming back and painting that back out. So if I go the top. then I can get that next toe fairly easily. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my white and I think my yellow ochre. And I'm going to come along the top with the finest line that I can muster. This will probably be the most I will look at bird feet. <laughs> I always feel like I'm just generalizing them so much. I'm going to make a little highlight across the joint and the second one, but smaller on the inside leg. Then I'm going to go dot, dot, dot. Just trying to take it back to there. See how that just kind of brings that to more of a footy foot shape? It does. It really helps. I'm 
There we go. So that's a little more than you might expect normally that we got that there. All right, that is a step. Let's continue on. I'm going to take my detail brush and my black paint. Might even get a little purple involved. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to make little tiny lines along the feather lines here with this little brush. Then these little curved black lines. And then kind of coming back with a few of these. That's kind of nice. I might need to fix that line, but I can. What are we doing, guys? Are we having fun? I didn't mean to start on you, John. Okay. Doing quite well. All right. Now I'm going to get my grainer involved, I think, at this point. Mm, actually, I might still work in my, my D brush. I'm going to get a little bit of my red magenta and my cad red on my D. And then I will go ahead and get some zinc. Maybe a little white here. Nope. Too soon. A little red in the white. Yeah. There we go. We're getting there. To the greener. I'm going to get it wet. Sometimes it helps to get a little glazing medium in it. I'm going to get it into my red and Quinn mix using glazing liquid. And I'm putting this wonderful color here, just the red and cad red. Sometimes it's fun to get the orange into the mix. You can see when I use this brush, it just does a lovely job. Now, I'm going to take my glazing medium over to my quinacridone and cad red and docks purple. Could use black, but I think I'm going to use this instead. And I'm going to brush back little shadows into these little underbelly pin feathers. And I'll even bring that back there because when I put the highlight feathers over, if the shadow is there first, it will make them pop a little bit. Uh, is just the uh, the purple 
And the red just making the shapes. And finding them, finding them, finding them well. All right, I'm gonna rinse, 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 rinse that out. Get some cad red and just my glazy medium. See how we can flick a little bit of line on that cad red over there and it just, this brush is a wonder. I'm flicking that out a little bit and bringing it down and see how that keeps it very red. I'm going to bring some little lines here into the little back of the feathers. Let's go into the orange some. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow. And come back kind of on the edge. Get some lines going on the wings is nice sometimes. Bring that up there, I think. And then I'll bring the black between those two. I'm gonna come with a little black on here. There we go. So nice. Just a shadow. I don't want anything to. Maybe I should have done purple. Okay, there we go. That's kind of nice. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of my zinc. I think I'm going to get into my zinc. Come over to my red, my cad red. Maybe a little more zinc. Cad red in the zinc. So that's uh, interesting. Hope says my brand new natural brush smelled really, really bad. Oh, yeah. They can. They can. Like uh, like any wet animal. <laughs> uh, we had a funny minute at you the... wash uh, it, make it smell better? Um, No, it's wet, it's wet animal hair. Um... Uh, you can wash the sizing out and everything, but if if you're sensitive to the smell of wet cat hair or wet horse hair or wet dog hair, you will notice wet natural brushes. Uh, bristles, I don't think as much, but definitely some of the hairs can. Um, that's how I identified the one goat brush at the retreat was we weren't sure what was going wrong. 
and uh, I, I didn't know about that they were made. They made a brush that was goat in the line I was using, and so we were trying to determine what was going on. And then we figured out, oh, goat. Maybe thicker than I need on that back feather at first, but sometimes that's just the only way I can get the look in is overdue. I'm going to rinse out a little bit. And now I'm going to take some of my white over to my red. And I'm going to get my cleanest water that I have in my bucket. You might go ahead and let it get a little bit into the orange and yellow just so it's not so white. Just adding a little highlight to that outside edge, right? And then maybe a little bit right here. And uh, let's uh, kind of add some there. A little bit there. And then a little bit of red. Okay, I'm going to rinse out a bit. Is that okay? Okay. Get a little bit more of my glazing medium on here. Get into my cad red and... Trying to make sure that the everything has got a nice color to it, I think. He's just getting fancier and fancier and fancier, isn't he? Now I'm going to come in and get a little of my black. Making sure our markings look good. Oh, thank you, Leanne Cunningham. And Leanne says, OMG, I'm loving this cardinal. I'm, I'm going to paint too. him. Yeah. I cannot wait for you to paint him. I'm so glad we did him this season. Yeah, lots of, lots of folks are looking forward to painting the cardinal this Just year. making sure we have good shadow under those little feathers. It's nice when they have good definition, honestly. But for a few white highlights, I don't know how we can make them any better. I'm going to take my detail brush and kind of fix up a little of this lower... It's wild how just little little changes make such a big world of difference. I'm going to get a little bit of white, pure white, which I have very little of on the canvas, and I'm going to add that to his eye, which is going to be quite a big reflection.
maybe add a little bit of a little reflection right there just to be playful mm. but i just uh oh don't rest your hand on your canvas or else you might touch smear it. it this is me just Those removing smear. the paint i sh what happened was this so i wasn't paying attention and i drug paint and that's how i get it off if the surface is dry underneath and the paint that is on top has not yet dried, I can generally lift it with water and not have to overpaint it. Okay. Though I do have one thing I really got to do here, which is I've got to take my glazing medium and my white. I'm just making sure the flow off the brush is good. This is like a little haloing and you will sometimes see this on wildlife and birds and things out, out there like just the way it might catch. And then I'll go back and I'll put him See what I mean? It's just a little bit, but it does make a nice little difference in the um in his appearance. And then what I do is I You. I trim back with my red. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you were. Yeah, I was there. Just kind of blending that back in so that haloing is, um, it's not like an outline. It really is like light just catching stuff. So that's why I had to do that. And in this particular one time case, probably going to sign in red. Yeah. A version of the red. So I'll just come in and get a color. I never want it to be something that just pulls the eye away from the whole painting. Right. So that's why I wouldn't use my brightest or warmest red. And I am thinking this much about my signature. Isn't that funny? Yeah. But the signature is part of the painting, and I really like this painting. So, like, this will probably go up as part of our holiday decor. Mm hmm So, <laughs> my own personal home to cheer it up. All right. There we go. Look at what we did. I, I don't know. Even better, if possible. I think it's amazing. I'm super in love with this piece. It's just my whole heart. It's okay that he gained a little weight. I love him. Um, his name is Buckeye. <laughs> <laughs> this is Buckeye the Cardinal. Oh. And uh, he visits trees. <laughs> oh, we're buffering right now. Are we? We are. We're going to have to fix whatever the buffering is. Luckily, it's at the very end, but we're going to fix it. I'm going to say, fixing it. We're going to mm. just wait here for a second we're gonna while We're going to wait buffers. for it to buffers out. It just, there it goes. I think it's, it's, going, it's counting down now, so it's probably going to be okay. Moderator Thalo Blue is letting Carrie know that YouTube does stuff like that to us. So, uh... It looks like and... it's okay now again. All right. Uh, yeah. So I am uh, Mrs. Cooney, uh, married to my husband, John Cooney. If you're Hello. just meeting us for the first time. So the disembodied voice is my husband. I sometimes get questions about like, why do I do this show with my husband? Um, because he's the one that can turn the lights on. Because <laughs> I, I work and the he, controls. He knows he knows me like like he knows when I'm fading or he knows when I need to teach. Him. Like at this point at 10 years, you don't want to. I don't even know what I would be like without him. But I know not as good of a teacher because he listens to you guys and he sees the chat and a lot of times he knows when to ask me a question when I'm not seeing it. So he's a great second support system to the whole thing. Um, I, I'm she, her, he's he, him. Um, and uh, we've been married like... A little bit. 27? 
couple years. Years, something like that. Decades and decades. We're getting on. I mean, our car, our marriage can rent cars and drink and get up to all kinds of trouble, all kinds of different places. The marriage is doing like it's. We've been married a long time. I've got uh, three kids, and I've been teaching art from home with my husband for ten years. I think we started in 2014 um, because I was teaching art in a painting party, and people kept like. Bursting into oh, tears and telling buffering. me it's changing Look at this their lives. Crazy and, thing, it's buffering again. And uh, and I came home to John and I was like, you know, a lot of people are trying to be at every class with me, and I didn't know everybody could paint like this, and I didn't know art was this important to like not just me but to everybody. And so I was like, we should figure out how to do this for free and um, and try to get it as many places as possible. Uh, and John had come from gaming and some uh, tech industry. We did some thinking on it, some brainstorming, and then he uh, he was like, let's do YouTube. Yeah. And that's how this started 10 years ago. I didn't know it was going to be my business. I didn't know I was going to be doing this full time. I didn't know I would have 2,500 videos and something like, yeah. I don't know how many thousands of paintings sitting around this place. Because believe you me, not everything many I paint thousands. is a winner, <laughs> especially when I was starting out. Teaching... Be so kind. If you see someone out here, um, and if you're a person who's doing that, if you're talking and painting and teaching and painting, that is legit hard. Uh, uh, I, I totally know why a lot of artists record it and then do the voiceover because the act of doing this and the act of explaining it do not live in the same part of your brain. Mm -hmm. So just be so nice to art teachers out there. Um, like we have a Facebook group and it's about me, but I, and, and I do allow people, there's a pinned post where you can share tutorials from other teachers, but we have, we've had a long time rule for like 10 years. Um, my head mom made it, which is that, um, you can't be mean to yeah. other teachers in my group. And I think I started that because it's just so hard to do this. It is. It's so hard. I can see where somebody might not love my chatty, chatty nature, and they might want somebody more quiet, or somebody might not like somebody who's quiet, and they might enjoy my chatty, chatty nature. I feel like there's, when I first started this, Angela wasn't back on YouTube yet, and um, there weren't that many teachers, and they were mostly male, with the exception of Lindsay, the frugal crafter. And I felt like as a mom of three in acrylic, I had something to say that wasn't being said on. I mean, I think Mark Criley was like the serious drawer on the platform. It was a minute ago. Jaza was the only one doing interesting Jaza <laughs> videos. By the way, if you haven't gone out and checked out Jaza, definitely you check Jaza should. Out. Um, when I, if you want to know like their, what artists impress me, he does. Uh, he is not only new mediums he experiments with new things and he forces himself to put out like excellent work so it's not just that he does pancake art when the trend is happening it's an excellent pancake piece and he thinks a lot of the trends that you guys see on youtube first um and you know there's just a lot more artists there so go by give him some love if you like that kind of thing and if, or and he's great to see if you want to try out a new kind of medium or like should i try a 3d printing pen or do I want to try this program or how hard would this be? Or what does the characters from Tolkien really look like? And if we did, we see them in the movie, how they were done in the book. Interesting things. So mm. check that out. My mom, Ginger Cook is live on Mondays. Check her out. I got my friend, Angela. You should check her out. And of course, Lindsay, the frugal crafter, which I just mentioned. Be sure and hit remind on all the upcoming lessons. Watercolor and oil pastel are coming. I heard you guys. You totally touched my heart. So those lessons are happening. <laughs> um, and will probably continue to happen because I have I have the biggest set of oil pastels that Sen LA makes. And if I do really, really. Okay, here's what. If you guys can consistently show up for the oil pastel lessons and they do really, really well, I will add chalk pastels to the thing and i'll see if i can't get the 500 because uh -huh. they have a 500 set of chalk pastels and that's painting by the way technically that's painting i might have to do it on an easel <gasps> so but those but the oil pastels will have to do well for us to open that up all right i've given you a goal given every all right rebooted uh better and everyone's rebooting and i think it's all okay we're and Virgo is saying, I love your chatty nature. It's always so interesting when someone's like, you talk too much. And then 10 people come in and they're like, no, it's the talking that gets us through. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, you know, we try things. Oh, I love this one. I, I swear. Really I too. wish I'd done this painting. I wish this was my first painting on the platform. This is really good. <laughs> Super really good. Like 
Guys, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.